Well, hello, welcome back to my channel. Just Shauna here to talk about some friggin' book. So there will be a part later on in this video that will be more of like a vlog style thing because I'm actually going to the bookstore tomorrow with Elle um, and, oh, and Charmaine as well, who does not have a booktube channel but does have a bookstagram, which I will link down below. But yeah, we are going to Changing Hands to meet up and I have some store credit already from the last time I was there and I got these books that I will show you momentarily and then I also have more books to unhaul so I anticipate that I will get <laughs> another book at least so whatever I get tomorrow I will just pop in towards the end with like a vlog style little update and I don't have very many books to show you right now because I haven't acquired that many recently Oh, I did just buy one yesterday, but I don't know when that'll be here. It's coming from eBay. It is this absolutely gorgeous edition of Wuthering Heights that Nashua uh, sent to me on Instagram because she saw it and was like, I thought of you. Um, I'll pop it in somewhere. It's so pretty. It's a Puffin Clothbound Classics edition. And my God. I saw it and I was like, yeah, I gotta find that. <laughs> and I found it on eBay for like 20 bucks, so I ordered that, but I don't know when it will actually be here. The first book that I'm going to show you today was actually gifted to me for my birthday very, very generously by Eric at Breakeven Books. Thank you so much, Eric. And the book in question is The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin. This is a duology, I do believe, the Dreamblood duology. And if you've been here for a minute, you know that I uh, read the fifth season a long time ago, like when I first started my channel, and I didn't care for it. I see the merit of it, but it was just a difficult time for me <laughs> reading it. Like, I just think my brain was not equipped. And I don't know if my brain is equipped now, but also I did listen to it on audiobook, and I just think that was not the best choice for me audio fantasy audiobooks in general usually aren't the best choice for me for like a first time reading a book and the fifth season is not a book that you need to be like distracted while reading and I was because audiobook so yeah I'm gonna try to reread that one at some point but I've heard really great things about this series this duology as well so yeah I had it on my wish list and we'll see hopefully I really enjoy it I really have no idea what it's even about <laughs> Following her Hugo, Nebula, and world fantasy... Oh, that's... <laughs> that's talking about the author. In the ancient city-state of Gujare, Gujare, peace is the only law. Upon its rooftops and among the shadows of its cobbled streets wait the gatherers, the keepers of this peace. Their duty is to harvest the magic of the sleeping mind and use it to heal, soothe, and kill those judged corrupt. But when a conspiracy blooms within Gujara's great temple, Ahiru, the most famous of the city's gatherers, must question everything he knows. Someone or something is stalking its prey, both in Gujara's alleys and the realms of dreams. Ahiru must now protect the woman he was sent to kill, or watch the city be devoured by war and forbidden magic. Well, damn, okay. Sounds cool. And yeah, I think it is a duology. The second book is The Shadowed Sun. And then the only two other books I have to show you right now. <laughs> um, the first one, this, these I got with store credit um, from Changing Hands. I traded in a few books and I got a fair amount of store credit this time. Usually I don't get that much because I don't often have a bunch of new releases, but I had so many <laughs> from this whole entire year because um, they weren't doing trade-ins. And I had, um, I think I still had Slayer by Kirsten White. I had Children of Blood and Bone and Children of Ven Virtue and Vengeance, and they took both of those. I had Cinderella is Dead. They took that. I think I had another newer release. But yeah, they took a few, and I got like 30 bucks of store credit, and I didn't use it all at all, because then I also had a $10 discount from like my stamp card. So my total only came to $7 for these two books, and I just used store credit. But anyways, the first book is The Wolf in the Whale by Jordana, yeah, Jordana Max Brodsky. Um, so this one I saw from Mara, yeah, Books Like Whoa. Um, she talked about this forever ago and enjoyed it. I don't recall that it was like 
her favorite book she's ever read or anything like that, but she like really enjoyed it and was singing its praises. And it sounds really cool to me. It is, so it says right here, the wolf and the whale blends Inuit and Norse mythology into an epic adventure in the frozen Arctic 1,000 years ago. And I'm intrigued by this, number one, because that is different from the regular like European medieval type of fantasy, which again, I always say, I still love. I will always love that kind of fantasy. Um, but I'm also interested in reading other types of fantasy based on other mythologies and lore and histories, etc. So I was very interested from that alone, but also more recently, uh, one of my works in progress that I have kind of come up with is loosely based. It's not like a reimagining of any kind of mythology, but it's just loosely based in Celtic and sort of Inuit like lore and mythology. Again, I'm not like trying to tell <laughs> anyone's story that isn't my own. It's just very inspired by those types of worlds and that type of mythology. Mostly Celtic, but yeah, that's um, kind of the world of one of my works in progress. So, very interested to see what this author has done with this. Um, and this one I think is a little bit more like directly based on some of this mythology, but it says, there is a very old story rarely told of a wolf that runs into the ocean and becomes a whale. Born with the soul of a hunter and the spirit of the wolf, Omat is destined to follow in her grandfather's footsteps, invoking the spirits of the land, sea, and sky to protect her people. But the gods have stopped listening and Omat's family is starving. Alone at the edge of the world, hope is all they have left. Desperate to save them, Omat journeys across the icy wastes, fighting for survival with every step. When she meets a Viking warrior and his strange new gods, they set in motion a conflict that could shatter her world or save it. I am intrigued. Um, I was a little leery seeing that the author is white. Um, I mean, and like the Norse stuff could be part of her like heritage, I'm not sure. Um, but I did read a couple interviews that she did and it sounds like she took care to have sensitivity readers who were Inuit um, professors and scholars and academics that she uh, got connected with. So, I don't know, I'll check out and see if there are reviews uh, that are more own voices um, and let you know whenever I read it what that consensus is. But yeah, I'm very interested in this. And the second book that I got last weekend, I'm kind of a dumbass. Kind of, but kind of not. Because, okay, this bookstore has new books with like new book prices, right? Like full priced. But then they also will have used books because they have the trade-in. And they do um, have mostly like newer books. It's not like a used bookstore necessarily. I don't know like how familiar everyone is because some people don't have like a lot of bookstore options where they live. But like there is also Bookman's here, which is great. And it's a used bookstore. Bookman's only has used books and they have a lot of like mass market paperbacks older mass market paperbacks of like fantasy stuff all of their copies are not like nice and well kept necessarily they are like more well kept than not but like some of them will have like tattered covers and stuff like that um, and they just have a huge selection and it's great and you can get a bunch of books for like five freaking dollars sometimes and they do store credit as well so you can trade in there so that's what I do is I take books to Changing Hands first and whatever they don't take, I take to Bookman's because they will take more uh, stuff that is a little dinged up than Changing Hands will. Changing Hands will only take used books that are still in really great condition and they usually take only like newer releases. Not necessarily all like this year, but stuff within the last like few years typically or that's very popular still if it's like from longer ago. So on the shelves, they will have like a series and a bunch of them will be new and then they'll have like a used copy with a little sticker on it, right? So I saw this particular series that I do wanna check out and I saw a used sticker and I grabbed it and they didn't have any of the first book in the series on the shelf, but I didn't realize that. So this was the first book on the shelf with the series, so I thought like, oh, it's a used copy of the first book. No, it's a used copy of the second book, but 
it, it's whatever. I'll, I'll have to, I'll probably pick up, if they have it when I go back tomorrow, I'll probably pick up the first book in this series. This is book two in the Inheritance Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. Uh, the first one is actually The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms. And um, yeah, this is another one by N.K. Jemisin that I have heard wonderful things about. I think that this one is, are they all adult? I don't I wanted to say that I thought one of her series was like a young adult series, but I don't actually know. I think they might all be adult. At any rate, this is one um, from, I think this might have been her earlier. Yeah, 2010 is when this was first published. So I think this was maybe her first series. I'm not going to read the back of this one because I don't know if it spoils anything for the first book. <laughs> I totally didn't realize until I got home. I like went to take the little used sticker off and I saw on the spine, I was like, oh, this is book two. So there's that for the current books, new books that I have acquired recently. And now I'll pop in whatever footage I have from the bookstore tomorrow in the future. <laughs> okay, I literally just got home from the bookstore runs. Um, and yeah, it was lots of fun. Saw Elle, uh, met Charmaine, who is in the Shelf Space Book Club Discord server all the time. She was a delight. And went to two local bookstores. So I will show you at the first one. So I had a full bag of this, oh God. This bag right here was full to the top. It's about halfway full now. They did not take a few things, both places. Nobody wanted this. I don't blame them. Also, nobody wanted this. I thought this was a long shot since it's so old, you know, but I'm like never gonna read it again. So it kind of was like, I could get rid of this. This one I've been trying to get rid of. I need to just like donate it to the library. Also, not surprised. This one also, I wasn't sure I could get rid of. Cats. Um, it's like a YA fantasy that's like not that many people have heard of, I guess, I don't think. This UK edition of, oh God, of Nutshell that I got in South Africa, maybe it's a sign I should just keep it. It's just so dirty. I don't know why I got it. Pretty cool cover, but like I also, I have a different edition of the paperback and I have the hardcover. It's not a book, it, I really like the book, but it's not a book where I feel like I need all the editions. And then this random like business nonfiction customer service crap. I don't, I'm never gonna read this again. So those are the ones I could not get rid of. Uh, but at the second bookstore at Bookman's, I got $20 for what they did take. They took quite, they took most of them. Um, I got The Children Act by Ian McEwen because I'm trying to get all of his books. And then I got uh, Enduring Love by Ian McEwan. And then this completely random fantasy that the cover just struck me. And I was like, you know, every now and then I like to take a chance. It was only $7. Duskfall by Christopher Hus Husberg, Huesberg. I don't know. It says, there are demons that even demons fear. There's a frozen sea. Not is this person's name. Didn't realize that, but okay. Dreams are dark, filled with violence and unknown faces. Winter, a Tielan woman. What does that mean? Tielan, maybe? I don't know. There's a priestess, a rebellion that only the Inquisition can crush. It says it's a delicious mix of Jason Bourne, dark fantasy, and horror. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know what the Ian McEwan books are about either. The writer witnesses a tragic accident, a hot air balloon with a boy trapped in its basket being top tossed in the wind. In the attempt to save the child, a man is killed. A stranger... Uh, joins in helping to bring the balloon to safety. Something passes between Perry and himself that day. Something that gives birth to an obsession in Perry so powerful it will test the limits of Rose's beloved rationalism, threaten the love of his wife Clarissa, and drive him to the brink of murder and madness. What? It sounds intense. Jesus Christ. And then the children act. I don't have this one already, do I? It wasn't in my book, buddy. No, I have the child in time. Okay. So the children act is Fiona. She's a high court judge presides over cases in the family division. Uh, she has private sorrow and domestic strife, lingering regret of her childless, childlessness, and her marriage of 30 years is in crisis. Then she has an urgent case, 
for religious reasons, Adam, a gentle 17-year-old boy, is refusing the medical treatment that could save his life, and his devout parents echo his wishes. Time is running out. Should the secular court overrule sincerely expressed faith? He, he just is so intense all the time, I swear to God. So anyways, those are the three books that I got from Bookman's. They all they came to $21, and the cashier was like, is it, you're fine. It's like, I'll do a dollar off. I was like, oh, thanks. And then at Changing Hands, I got, I only got $8 for the book they took. I don't even know which, they maybe they took a couple. I don't know. At any rate, I don't know which one. I didn't look. Um, but I still had $23 from before. So I got Ray Bear by Jordan, Jordan. wow, can't talk, Ifweko. Um, I've been wanting this one for a while, so I finally grabbed it. Woot woot. Those are the four additional books that I picked up today. Hello. Sniffing the bag? As always, thank you so much for your time. Hope that you guys have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.